Hello everyone, welcome to the IAU Women and Girls in Astronomy project. I'm Aviva Yamani, your host today. I'm the National Outreach Coordinator of Indonesia. I'm also a co-founder of Langit Selatan, an astronomy online media in Indonesia, and a project director of 365 Days of Astronomy. This is a daily podcast project under CosmoQuest. Today, the world is celebrating the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. The IAU celebrated women and girls in astronomy on February 11, 2019. As the legacy of this project, we are celebrating the Women and Girls in Astronomy project by supporting events that recognize the role of women in advancing science and encouraging girls to consider a career in space and astronomy. Today, we have with us Mrs. Salma Silambaye. But before we discuss with her, let me introduce her to you. Mrs. Salma Silambaye is currently a PhD student at the University Sheikh Anta Diop in Senegal. Not only will she be the first woman astrophysicist in Senegal, but she will be the first astrophysicist in the country. Her background is nuclear and atomic physics, where she obtained a postgraduate degree. Now, for her PhD, she is working on impact flashes on Jupiter and the study of uh, variable stars with small telescope. Her PhD is, an, is a collaboration between University Sheikh Anta Diop in Senegal, Observatoire de Paris in, Paris in France, Oikomedan Observatory in Morocco, and the University of Antwerp in Belgium. She is the National Outreach Coordinator of Senegal. She is also a member of the Organizations for Women in Science for the, for the Developing World. We are pleased to welcome Mrs. Maye. Hello, Salma. How are you? I'm fine. Hello, Aviva. So what do you think about the first uh, about being the first woman astrophysicist in Senegal after you get your PhD and the first astrophysicist in the country? Uh, very nice question. Thank you. Uh, to be the first woman in astronomy in the country is for me a pride. Uh, it is an opportunity, but also a responsibility because you have to be able an ideal example to, to be an ideal example in order to motivate and inspire others to make this choice, especially girls. And after my PhD as the first astrophysicist formal in Senegal, I wish to participate in the development of teaching, research, and education in astronomy. I would invest myself in being among the actors who will allow the future generation to be able to choose astronomy as a career. I will commit myself to ensuring that we have in Senegal quality training and equipments in astronomy in order to offer training in astronomy in the local level and strengthen our international collaboration. As a first PhD doctorate in astronomy, also I would like to teach astrophysics and have a laboratory in astrophysics for Senegal. Okay. Uh, could you tell us why you became interested in astronomy? Uh, astronomy started to interest me at the university when I met with a woman astrophysicist who inspired me a lot. But this science is not talked in Senegal. It was a few years later that I had the opportunity to, force, to, to follow a career in astronomy. Um, during your uh, time to pursue astronomy, um, are you facing gender discriminations to become an astronomer? Uh, yeah, yes, I can, I can say yes. I face gender discrimination in my path as a woman astronomer, but the discrimination is positive 
because I receive a lot of encouragement from the fact that uh, in our society, science or higher study are more made for men, despite multiple awareness raising effort on gender e equality. Okay, so why is gender equality important? Uh, for me, gender equality is uh, important because it allows women to have more freedom to carry out their duties with confidence and to give more positive results without constraint of being judged. So uh, why is it important to have more women in astronomy as well? Uh, it is important to have more women in astronomy to reverse the trend and demonstrate that women are also able to, uh, to advance this research, to have women in position of, of responsibility in astronomy. This will be beneficial for the whole society as it allows to expand the astronomy, the, the astronomer community. Okay, um, this is important to have more, more, more women in astronomy. It is very important. Okay, this is just my curiosity. How do you reach mm -hmm. the girls in your country and inspire them to have career in science, especially astronomy? Yes, to to, to reach uh, girls in science, or particularly in astronomy, uh, sometimes we organize activities uh, that we target directly girls and women. And uh, uh, sometimes also when we organize activities to reach more girls and women, we put the motion, the participation of girls and women is strongly encouraged. Okay, thank you. It is our so, strategy, yes. If you have one piece of advice for the girl who is trying to study astronomy, what would that be? Mm -hmm. I, yes, for a girl who try to, to do astronomy, I say welcome and I advise uh, not to be afraid to follow their dream. It is only necessary to work well. It is not a question of gender. Mm -hmm. uh, I encourage them to love science in order to be astronomer. Okay, what, so what is the barrier for you to be an astronomer as a woman? And how did you overcome that barrier? Uh, the constraint for me to be an astronomy, as to be as an astronomer, to be an astronomer as a woman is uh, the fact that astronomy is not talked on, on, on my country and that I often have to travel without my family. Uh, however, thanks to the partnership with international institution and the scholarship program, I managed to do my, my research. I also have the support of my family and my husband to be able to reconcile family life and research. All my supervisor also motivate me. In, uh, in my research. So you have a good support system, as I can yes. see. So, yes. uh, what can be done to encourage positive change in relations to the low representations of women in decision-making decision roles in astronomy? I think for positive change in decision-making roles in astronomy, we need programs. Uh, yes, we need programs. Programs must be created that target women such as uh, uh, the new program in Africa, African Network of Women Astronomers. We need also to define policies that give women access to position of uh, responsibility in cases of, uh, of skills, in, uh, in cases of equal skills such as parity. We need also policies that aim to eliminate discrimination and promote equal rights. 
Adiva, what is like for women to study and work in astronomy in Indonesia? I would be interested to know about your personal experiences in this regard. Okay, um, I'm going to answer this that um, actually we don't really have a big problem in gender equality here because everyone can pursue what they want to pursue. So for science, there are many girls uh, goes to choose science in the university. I, either it's astronomy, physics, chemistry, biology, or mathematics, or even the, the engineering. But um, actually in our, well, this is like a perception that science is for men and not for uh, women. And it's uh, maybe there is, we still have this, not a big part of it, but we still have this kind of issue. But the, the, the biggest issue maybe is uh, many children here, many students think that science is uh, something that really hard. So they don't, re don't really like science. This is one of the challenges we have here. And then <clears throat> if someone uh, not pursue science as a career, it's not because gender equality, but mostly it's because uh, economy problem that they can't go to the higher educations. They can't pursue higher education. As for me, myself, um, okay, maybe I can add this one as well. Uh, the problem here in Indonesia is not about gender equality, but <laughs> I think it's about the, the we don't have many, uh, uh, many, many place for us to, for astronomy. <laughs> so I mean, like, uh, there is not, not many jobs in astronomy here. So we have the space stations and then we have astronomy. There is two, unif two astronomy department in Indonesia and one um, observatory. So there is not many chance to, to have career in astronomy, even though we, we have increasing the numbers right now. I mean, there is a, in, we, we will have a new national observatory. So we, I think there are more people can go and pursue career in astronomy right now. But uh, <clears throat> most of the astronomy graduations, after I graduate from astronomy, many students, they, they choose another career for their life. So it's, many of them become teachers, uh, working in a bank, become journalists, become editor, writer, and many other fields. And yeah, most of them go, uh, most of them working as a programmer. In my personal experience, um, after I graduate, at first I want to go to pursue a career in astronomy as a scientist, as an astronomer, but then I fall in love with uh, a blog <laughs> writing for public and then we we also see the problem here in Indonesia uh, the, the the biggest problem here is that people um, easily trust in hoax and misinformations so at 2007 we saw many people still have problem between uh, uh, geocentric versus heliocentric and then many people believe there is um, that Mars will be as big as the full moon. So it's, we see the curiosity of the people at that time. And then we decided to build a new media for astronomy in Indonesia, because at that time, most of the astronomy articles, most of the astronomy news is uh, only in major media, newspaper and magazine. And it's not every day, but like one or twice in a month, once or twice in a month. And then in television, there is not much uh, astronomy news. So <clears throat> we decide that if we have one special media about astronomy, then we can educate people. We can give the right information to them. And then we start with a magazine, but it failed. Then we choose uh, online media. Why online media? Because Indonesia have has more than 17,000 
island and to reach the whole country, the cheapest way is a uh, online media. Uh, but we did realize that we have problem with internet access in many places as well, but it improved uh, in time to time. And especially during COVID, I don't want to say that thanks to COVID, but um, during COVID, we have to work from home, school from home, then uh, the government, they improve um, the internet access to many students in this country. So from the statistic, we can see that uh, many students, they they come to, they, they visited our website, not only to, to, to uh, read the hoax or misinformation, but also they look for the fundamental astronomy topic. So that's for now. And um, right now we have uh, um, women astronomy, uh, woman astronomer as the decision maker in the observatory and also the astronomy department and also in the space agency as far as I know. So that's the, my answers to you. And can you give a message to girls who are interested in astronomy? Yes, for girls interested in astronomy, I strongly encourage them to do astronomy and I tell them uh, and I tell yes and I tell them uh, that science needs their talent astronomy also needs their talent their potential their inspiration for a better world uh, with them as leaders we will be at the heart of innovation in astronomy and science. I encourage them to, to love and to follow career in, in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Thank you, Salma, for your time. It was a pleasure talking with you. And thank you to those watching at home. I hope aspiring future astronomers will be encouraged and inspired by this interview. Thank you very much. Thank you.